Hello and welcome to the first of what will be many, hopefully, uh, tutorials on Helium MIDI Sequencer. Now in this video I'm going to cover the basics. I mean these are the fundamentals that everybody that's used the sequencer should know. I want to demonstrate the basics so that uh, you get an idea of my workflow when using this, this app. Uh, so we're going to go over um, recording of notes, step recording, uh, recording from other packages and such like. Now, Helium was designed to work around AUM, so it's AUM I'm going to use to demonstrate this. And because uh, Helium is a MIDI plugin, the first thing we need to do is create a MIDI channel. Select the input and choose Helium MIDI Sequencer as the source. So now we have uh, Helium loaded to generate the MIDI. Uh, we now need a sound source, and in this case, I'm going to create an audio channel and add a copy of Digitalism um, because I think it's a good synth um, and it'll do for what we want. Let's just check and make sure we actually have a sound selected here that's uh, going to be suitable. I do like bell piano sounds. So, okay, now we need to ensure that the output from Helium is rooted to digitalism. So if you uh, just make sure it's uh, rooted to uh, port one, output port one of Helium, and we're good to go. So let's open up Helium and just expand the window a little so we've got some room to work with. Now, the first thing to note is that you can zoom uh, vertically as well as horizontally, and that is a real big boost when laying notes because you get that little bit more accuracy. Uh, so, the other thing is that the piano roll is touch sensitive, so if we click on a note on the piano roll, we'll hear that sound on the destination uh, synth engine, in this case, digitalism. So that kind of gives you an idea of where you want to be for laying your notes. Now right now you'll notice on the left toolbar that the selection tool is highlighted. And we want to click on the edit tool to lay notes. Now you'll notice that some of these icons on the display uh, have a little triangle in the upper left corner. Uh, if you tap and hold on these buttons, you'll see that there is a, a, a pop-up toolbar with multiple selections. In this case though, we just want to stick with the default tool. So with the draw tool selected, we can now tap and hold on any position within the timeline. And we can drag a note of any length. As you can see here, because I've still got my finger held down, we can uh, position that note uh, more accurately. And when we release, it becomes permanent. Now, if you add a note by accident or you want to remove a note, just simply tap on it and it will be deleted. So let's re-add that note and show you some editing functionality. Now if we tap near the start of the note, in the first half of the note, we can then drag that note to a new position. If we tap on the end of the note, we can resize the length of the note and drag it up and down alters the velocity. Now you'll notice when I moved that note around or attempted to resize, it was snapping to a quarter beat boundary. And that is controlled by the grid size. Uh, and the top ruler you can see that there's a grid size option. And if I was to pick say bar, you'll notice now that this uh, note can only be dragged to bar boundaries. Um, if you want finer precis precision, uh, set a smaller grid size but by default it, uh, it it's set to quarter notes so just uh, be aware of that and don't get that mixed up with quantize which is something completely different quantize is the uh, snap value for recorded notes not for edited notes now if we tap and hold on the edit tool or the edit button uh, we display a list of editing tools if i pick the paint tool you can see that we can use this to uh, paint a series of notes, all end to end. 
Now it's also worth pointing out that the length of those painted notes is determined by the current grid size. So if we change the grid size to 8 notes and try again, uh, we're going to get a series of notes that are closer together. Now I showed you earlier how you can adjust the velocity of a note by clicking on the tail and um, dragging up or down. But there's another way. If we press the controller button at the bottom, you can see the note velocities here. Now I want you to notice that the controller lane has its own set of tools uh, available on its own toolbar. Now if I select the edit tool uh, and long press that, you'll see that there are a number of tools. But currently I've got the paint tool selected. And with this tool, I can simply paint in velocity values by dragging my finger or Apple Pencil along the controller lane. Now you can see in that top uh, edit window that those notes have a little ghost underneath them which means they've been selected. Uh, if I deselect those notes you'll see that in the controller lane the notes have become very subdued and uh, uh, almost transparent. If we uh, select the draw tool which is a more accurate method of drawing and tap on those individual notes within the controller lane uh, that selects the note in uh, the note edit window. Now if we tap and hold on any one of those uh, notes in the controller lane we can see the current velocity value of that note. If we tap, hold and drag on any one of those notes we can increase or decrease the velocity and we can see very accurately what that velocity is. So that's a great tool for editing controllers, but more on that later. I'm going to select all these notes again by picking the selection tool and just selecting all those notes so they're all active. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on that first note and drag up and down. As you can see, we're actually editing a full selection of notes there, not just individual notes. So now we've got some of the basic editing functions under our belt. Let's have a little look at, look at loop recording. Uh, I'm first going to check that I've actually got input from my external MIDI keyboard and what we're going to do here is record a little loop and I'm going to record a four bar loop so the first step is to select four bars within the ruler area just by dragging your finger across that uh, ruler area now because we want to sync this with the AUM transport you need to enable this sync option and when we enable this option you'll notice that the play button within uh, helium is is selected automatically because it's disabled uh, helium's internal transport you have to use the AUM transport when sync is enabled so if we now press AUM's start button you'll see that uh, helium plays along which is what we want now to record in continuous loop mode we need to uh, turn the loop button on and we want to record so we need to hit the record button now once I pre press play on AUM's transport, it is now ready for recording. And when we loop round, I'm going to enter a few chords. So basically it's that simple. But the thing to note here is that the quantize is currently set to 16th notes. So if you're trying to record a passage with anything shorter than 16th notes, you need to adjust that quantize setting. Now once the recording session starts, an undo buffer is created and you can always press the undo button to go back and try again. So let's have a little look at step recording. Now you notice that the record button has one of the little triangles in the top left corner, which means it's a long pressable button. And if we long press the record button, we can turn on step recording. Now this means that every time we press a note on the keyboard or a chord, it enters a note. So I'm just simply entering a series of notes here and the play cursor is advancing in steps of grid. So currently we're entering quarter notes but if you want to enter eighth notes set the grid to eighth notes and so on. You can always reposition the cursor and en enter different types of notes in step record mode. Now it's advisable to turn that off when you've finished. step recording easy isn't it 
Let's try recording a second track and this time we're going to record some drums from EG Pulse. So I've got a drum kit loaded in EG Pulse here. It's set to sync to AUM Transport. So everything's nice and tight. And we can go back into Helium and press the track button and choose another track. So we'll go for track two. Now this is where you've got to think uh, a little bit. Um, we want to send the output of EG Pulse into Helium for record. So make sure uh, Helium is set to receive input from EG Pulse. Then just check your quantize settings and make sure they're adequate for the recording. And now it's just a case of rewinding, hitting the record button and pressing play on AUM's transport. And at this point, recording will start. Now, one mistake I made was leaving loop mode on there. I don't want loop mode, I don't want multiple uh, notes recorded, so I've just stopped that manually. Now, you may have noticed uh, when we record into Helium, uh, the screen does a bit of zooming around to encapsulate the notes uh, that are incoming. Um, and that just saves you looking around for those notes after recording. Now then, we need to uh, play that back to uh, that recording back to EG Pulse. So ensure that EG Pulse is looking at the right MIDI port. Now in this case, I'm going to use MIDI port two, and we're going to redirect those notes from track two to MIDI port two. So if you tap and hold on the track button, you can select one of four output MIDI ports. And now if we play back AUM's transport, we can hear the drum, uh, recorded drums sent out to uh, EG Pulse. Now normally you use AUM's masking to uh, determine what channel, what MIDI channel something is receiving on. If you notice there, I used a one of the four output MIDI ports. That's just one way of routing within AUM. But uh, ultimately you have uh, uh, 16 channels over four ports you've got 48 output ports and that's per per instance as well so you could load multiple instances and use the output ports four output ports on each instance if you wanted to do it that way but i recommend using the masking unless you have a good reason to use a dedicated uh, midi output port the only reason i didn't add any more was because this menu can get awfully full <laughs> So if you were doing it the other way with a masking, you would select the MIDI port 1, but instead you would just select channel 2 here as the MIDI receive channel within the AUM MIDI filter. Now under normal circumstances, you would use the AUM's volume sliders to mix different instruments. And that works uh, as well as can be expected. You know, I think that is probably the number one way to do your mixing. But we do allow the ability to mix uh, various tracks within uh, Helium itself using our own inbuilt mixer. Now it's a pretty limited mixer, it controls the output velocities uh, for each channel, but you can actually use this not only to name tracks, if you long press on the actual track names, you can uh, uh, name all your tracks, which is a, is a good thing to do. Um, but also, um, we can control the velocities from within here. Now, while there are controller messages we could send for uh, volume, channel volume, uh, not all instruments respond to them, so that's why we've used uh, velocity scaling here. Um, now, as well as the uh, volume control, we also have uh, mute and solo here as well. So, obviously, if you're working on a piece and want to work with that in isolation, you can come in here and mute and solo those tracks. Now, to round off this video, uh, I want to go over a few things that might help make life easier while editing, and a couple of things that might trip you up along the way. Now, when you're laying notes, you have no real idea of what note that is. You don't get any audible feedback by default. You have to actually tap on the piano roll to get, actually get any output. Now, you can actually go to the main menu and turn on the uh, option that allows um, you to hear notes as you're laying them and as you're moving them around. And that is very useful if you're laying chords or something like that. Now, if you want to pre prevent things like uh, the cursor jumping when it hits scroll boundaries 
or the zooming of notes when we're recording input, we can turn those options off in here. There's also a MIDI through option which prevents us echoing uh, incoming uh, MIDI data to the output, uh, which could be useful. And there's also a high contrast mode for those with visual impairments or if you're having trouble seeing the guides. Now in future videos I'm going to go over things like uh, the media bay uh, which I think I covered in the preview video, the opening video. If you want to know a little bit more information on this the preview video is good to watch. Um, but basically it shows you how to import MIDI clip libraries and be able to create songs using drag and drop. So I'm, I plan on a whole video uh, with that. And I also want to do a video on the controller lane because there's a whole new kettle of fish here. Now the controller lane allows you to do many things. Um, as you notice there, we you can you can actually turn on an additional ruler in there for accuracy. You could even alter the height of that controller lane. Um, now that controller lane allows us to edit any of the uh, 127 controllers available. Um, but I'll save that for a rainy day. Um, there's just one more thing, is that if we collapse the interface up so that uh, buttons will not fit, you'll see this more button appear, and any buttons that won't fit will appear inside there. Now one last thing, uh, I did say that there was a gotcha, and the gotcha is for Cubase 3 users that might feel they want to load Helium within uh, Cubase 3. There is a bug in Cubase 3, unfortunately, uh, which is fixed in the new beta, but is still um, there in the uh, release version. Now this is only specific to uh, Cubasis 3 and it will be fixed in a future release, but it's currently reporting itself as uh, a sample rate of 44.1 kHz to uh, MIDI uh, plugins, uh, when it is in fact 48. So all you've got to do is go in there and set that to 48 kHz and everything should run in sync. So that just about covers this basic recording tutorial. Uh, look out for more tutorials coming soon. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to thumbs up on the video and I'll see you next time.